Before we start drawing the diagram, we should open global data, at least for a little while. We can do that from data menu by selecting global command, or alternatively, we can use this button with the house, or control Y shortcut would do the same. And now, as you see, there are a few categories of global data with lots of fields and tables. But don't worry, because majority of them are not obligatory. They just give you opportunity to define some default data, but you will never use all of them. This red bar here indicates that something is missing or wrong, and if we pull it down, we'll see that only one information is really missing. It's really obligatory. It's selecting the pipes. However, it's good also to enter the first category. And at the top, you can see a group of fields, name of the project, address, city, and so on. They have light green background. This color means that fulfilling this field is not obligatory. However, in the real designs, it's good to enter this information because they will be printed on the printouts with the results. Then you can select the climatic information, the design external temperature and annual mean external temperature. And then you can decide on the exact scope of calculations. For example, the first option it's for selecting radiators. So if you design a new system, you have to switch it on. But if you balance an existing system without changing radiators, then you should switch it off and then you will have to enter all the sizes of radiators manually. In the same way, the next option work, selecting of diameters. In case of designing a new system, we will have it on. But if we balance or rebuild the existing system, but without changing the pipes, we can switch it off and then we will have to enter all the diameters. The third checkbox, it looks like an option, but in fact, it's not possible to switch it off because program always performs the balancing of the system. And you can also use the other options and decide on the exact scope of calculations. And as I told you, it's obligatory to select the pipe. So let's go to pipes category. And in the table here, you can select the pipes. If you enter this field, now you can click this button with this little black triangle and the catalog of pipes will open. As an example, I would just select the first pipe in the list. And now I can click select button. And now I associated this pipe with the symbol A. And from now on, wherever in my design I will use this symbol A, the program will know which pipe to apply. But there are more letters, so you can select also other pipes. And now I selected another pipe and I've got two pipes in my system. And if I select one pipe, one row in the first table, the second table shows me the scope of available diameters and the information about them. And I can change something. For example, I can exclude one of the diameters. Let's say that for some reasons we don't wish to use the smallest diameter of 16 millimeters. So now I can select no and the program won't use this diameter, the smallest diameter will be 20. So now let's select yes uh, again. Uh, this 
checkbox, as you see, it's black because it means that I selected it manually. The others are green uh, because that means that uh, that was the default uh, solution. And as you see, this red bar disappeared. So it means that we have entered all obligatory data. Now, let me show you an example of defining default data. That is not obligatory, but very useful, as it may save a lot of time. For example, very often we wish to insert a lot of radiators of the same type. So it's better to define this type as standard one. So, for example, let's go to the radiators tab. And now you can declare the default information, for example, symbol radiator for each possible class of radiators. For example, we'll define for the class panel radiator VK. So now let's enter the symbol column and let's pull down this field so the catalog of radiators opened. As you can see, there are a lot of types of radiators in the software just of this class panel radiator VK, so with the Wolf uh, built in and with the bottom connection. So we would need some filtering. For example, we can filter the company, for example, a poor more radiators. And now our list is much shorter and we can either select the specific type of radiator, for example, CV1160. It means that the height of radiator is 60 and it's got just one panel. If we change the type tab for the dimensions, then you can see the available dimensions. In this case, these are the possible lengths of the radiator and you can also see the output of these radiators for the specific temperature. If you wish to learn the information about the other temperature, you can just uh, change it. But we have also the typesets. For example, this one, CV asterisk asterisk 60. And this typeset connects these four specific types. So if you select the typeset CV asterisk asterisk 60, so you will just fix the height that it must be 60 centimeters high. But the program will be able to select not only the length, but also the amount of panels. The program will start with this first one, with just one panel, and if that won't be enough, would we'll go to the other and so on, until it uh, selects the appropriate radiator. So let's say that we wish to select this one. So I will click the button select. And now I selected this specific type of radiator for this class. And now if I go to the diagram and if I enter the radiator of this class in the uh, diagram, so if I don't change this information, the program will assume automatically that this radiator will be of this specific type. Uh, and the green color just tells us that it's some kind of automatic selection. In this case, it was inherited from global default data, but I can select another radiator, just an example. And in this case, I selected an exception. Then this radiator would be of the other type. And now you can see the symbol of this radiator mm, printed with the black font. That means that this data has been entered manually and not selected automatically. Defining default data, as I told you, it's not obligatory, 
but saves really a lot of time because you can enter the repeating information just one rather than thousands of time. It's only important to find what's the standard solution in your case and what are the exceptions. <music>